Okay, bum ba ding ding bum. Wow, hey, it's finally that time. I took my time making this video, or like to finally get to this. You know, the, the list week is upon us. Okay, my top 50 songs, top 50 albums. I'm gonna do my top 50 songs today. I'm gonna record that shit today, and then I'm gonna edit this shit. Some of it today, maybe some of it tomorrow, and then I'll get to my albums, okay? But for now, music, uh, singles comes first, or not singles, okay, songs. I will say, too, just in case the song doesn't make it here, such as something like, um, oh, what the, how can I not remember the name of the song? That one big song by The Smile, or any of the uh, Playboy Cardi singles, you know, considering they're going to be on projects in 2024, I'll count them for 2024, okay? Um, so these are like, I think maybe there's a song on here, potentially, that came out in 2022. I honestly don't think there is, but whatever, okay? That's how I do it. Let's get in on it, okay? Number 50, I have I Will Be With You Always by Reverend Christian Michael Hader. This is like this album, you know, gospel album um, under another name by Lingua Gnota. And this is the song that stuck out with me the most. It's just very long, lengthy, like six minute crooning track where she has this just it, very, um, you know, eerie vocals to it. Uh, it, you know, really stood out for me. Banger. Next up, The Tinker by Maruha off of their new uh, EP. And this one, I just think, uh, I'm pretty sure too, this is like the instrumental song on it. And I think being able to focus on the instrumentation, I mean, them being this post-rock band, I think they really sell it on here. Next up, Leave Me Like This by Skrillex and Bobby Raps. Uh, yeah, not probably not the biggest Skrillex fan uh, overall, but um, this song is a banger, 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 banger. Production level, catchiness level. Like when I first was listening to this song, I was run it back, run it back, run it back. Definitely worth um, your attention. Next up, Big Man Little Dignity by Paramore. At the end of the day, I think this Paramore album is quite consistent, but if I had to choose one that stood out the most, it'd be this one. Just mostly on that hook. Um, good emotions to this one. I mess with it. Didn't record, bro. I can't believe it didn't record. Oh my gosh. Um, but okay, just to put this in there for you, the song called Milo by Tangy. Um, didn't even listen to the project data, but this came out later. Heard it was good. Listened to it a lot. Um, yeah, it's it's not like in the sense like this really dancey reggae tone, but it's very much more this darker, moody, a lot of instrumentation changes on there. It's excellent, excellent song. You know, I've, I've certainly had my fatigue with Cemetery in the sense where I feel like a lot of these songs sound familiar, but this one I think really stands out. Worth a uh, worth listen. Block Hug by Jim Legacy, okay? Just found out J about Jim Legacy a little bit later into the year, and uh, yeah, I certainly mess with this song. It's got this like sort of emo tinge to it, like this acoustic guitar, and then we transition later into some more straight up rap. Uh, and I'm just really liking the emotions from this guy. Um, really standing out. Next up, Liked You Better by Jeff Rosenstock. Um, Jeff Rosenstock, again, this is just like Paramore's album where it's just a very consistent project. Uh, you know, many of the songs could have landed on here, uh, but I think Liked You Better, uh, or even maybe Life Admin, but Liked You Better was just more the one that stood out the most, right? The one that I was familiar with the most. Um, it's just, you know, perfection when it comes to this pop punk sound. Um, Jeff Rosenstock, like, no one's doing it better than him at the end of the day. Next up, uh, Free Yourself by Jesse Ware. Uh, this, again, okay, I guess this is a song that came out last year too, and then on an album this year. Wow. Really hits with the disco vibe. I mean, ma many of the songs hit the same way as this one, but um, I love that anthem of freeing yourself, and then that the end part too, I think, is especially a reason why it's on here, where then that piano comes in, right, and you're like, can you feel Oh my god! Jesse Ware, she knows what's going on. Next up here, Princess Going Digital by Amari. Um, I'd say this, you know, out of all the Amari songs, or Amari, I don't know how to say it, this is just the one I was singing along to the most. Um, you know, in the streets, in and in the streets. Um, yeah, the, the great song. Next up, Topper by Stiffy. Stiffy is like some Argentinian like cloud rapper and I, you know, certainly liked his new project, but Topper was the one that I was coming back to the most for sure. Um, it's just very fast paced, energetic stuff. It's certainly worth your time. Next up, Say Something by Little Yachty. There was like maybe two other songs by on uh, Little Yachty's new album that could have made it, but Say Something I think is the one that, you know, stood out the most for me. Great R&B elements. There's certainly enough of a cinematic transition to the song. Um, yeah, great. 
Next up, Jen's Terrific Vacation uh, featuring Casa Overall by Danny Brown. Um, this and the other single by Danny Brown I do think stand out uh, on an energy basis, but I feel like this one, just its themes on gentrification, I think it stands out for me there uh, on a lyrical front. Um, yeah, Danny Brown's continuously still a wonderful rapper. Next up, All the Small Things by Earl Sweatshirt and the Alchemist. So this didn't make it to the streaming version, but I still think this is the best song from Earl this year. Um, it's just got such this laid back, like I would say there is, it's not as, uh, the songs on Voir Dyer aren't as fun as the sound that this song was giving to me. It's just so, oh my god. Next up, uh, this is a new album I just listened to, Middle Fingers Up, MP3 by Tisa Korean. This is just, it's just chaos, pure chaos, just the sound is put up to 11, um, and Tisa Kree is a, a crazy man, okay? Like, this is... It, it's it, To me, it's less about the, the hip-hop or the rapping, and it's much more about about the energy being provided here, for sure. Next up, I See Myself by Geese, uh, off that new album, 3D Country. Um, yeah, to me, this is just like this good, um, almost... What can I explain it as? Like, it isn't Heartland Rock, but I'm saying, like, it gives me like the Bruce Springsteen ballad feel, like the emotive ballad feel of that, uh, and it certainly works for me. Um, next up, Ana Frango Electrico, or with Electric Fish. Um, it's just this like very jazzy pop track, um, and it's very light, but it's also very fast paced as well. Um, yeah, catchy track. Very catchy track. Uh, next up here, African Sex Freak Fantasy by Mike. This is the one song I would say that isn't trying to be smooth sold uh, on this album. It's very uh, industrial. Um, and again, it's still two minutes long, right? But uh, it, it really stood out for me. It really uh, took me by surprise. Uh, next up, Amaranth by Model at Trees. Um, fantastic project for sure. But um, Amaranth being on here, I just think uh, the aggression on this one or that breakdown on this one is just the one that's the most uh, entertaining. Um, but yeah, when it comes to model trees, they're certainly not how to uh, you know make a, a very compelling industrial noise um, song. Next up here, Lucid by Odd Eye Circle. Um, there could have been many songs I could have picked on this project, to be honest. Uh, I'd like a short EP, but I think this is the one that stood stands out for me. When it comes to like K-pop or J-pop or any of that stuff happening there, um, I've said this before many times, but it's like some of the Western, like, pop artists need to learn about, like, what they can do with production, okay? Like, catchy level, maybe they can be on par, but just the way that these songs are produced sometimes, oh, my God. Next up here from the Black Country uh, New Road Live album, Turbine's Pigs, okay? Turbine's Pigs. It, this one's extremely impressive, okay? It's like this eight, nine-minute song, um, very, um, very much so... I would say that they were doing this a lot with the new album, but like very much so like a show tunes, right? It feels like it's in some sort of musical. But then at the same time, right, you, with Black Country New Roads, and especially seeing them live this year, it's just, there's such this detailed instrumentation that is like, you know, you're listening to it not for a catchiness level, you're listening to it for this technicality, like, all these instruments are, are a part of the story. It's, no, it's certainly brilliant. Um... Okay, next up here, Hollywood Baby, 100 Gex. Damn! Look, 100 Gex, they're, they're masters at their craft making catchy songs, but their ability to make this very loud pop punk song, I, I would say this one compared to some other songs in the album, is it's less into this hyper pop region, but it's just got such this nostalgic vibe while also, you know, kind of um, still sounding like the future. And I, I really, I certainly respect that. Next up here, Easy Prey, Little Glamain. Okay, again, this was on a comp album this year, but uh, was a single from last year. Easy Prey. This is very much so like a, like a noise, like pop uh, punk song. Uh, again, how, how do we know Little Ugly Main from, right? Rap music, but he comes in perfecting this. This is very like early 2000s uh, pop punk sound. Um, and you know, just the cynicism from him, it really works. Next up here, Going, Going, Gone by Hemlock Springs. Um, very catchy song, very catchy song. I would say this is certainly on that indie pop, indie synth pop realm. Um, a little bit like emo, uh, melodically maybe, and then, you know, I, with this project too, I'll say, um, it, there's this, there's this sense of like Depeche Mode for me. 
be honest. I, I really enjoy this. Really enjoy this. Next up, Can't by Anohi and the Johnsons. Wonderful project. Uh, um, these songs are very much so, like, just very well orchestrated. And I think uh, out of any of the artists this year, that she's really good at um, vocally taking emotions out of me, for sure. It's a very emotive, uh, a very powerful, strong you know, song. You know what I mean? Like... Uh, sometimes emotional songs can feel like this, This, uh, you know, the songwriter or the singer is, is losing hope or giving up on something, but this feels like a pushing through type track. I really like that. Next up here, Under Your Spell by Snow Strippers. Um, this is a very chaotic when it comes to production. Um, lots of sounds coming your way. This is much more in that, like, uh, I don't even know what to explain, like this witch house sound in a way as well. Um, yeah, quite brilliant. And it's all, uh, album I may have not have listened to if it wasn't for uh, Yom's channel. Next up, Needs by Tanache. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, he's killing this R&B game, I, I must say. Okay, sometimes we have trouble with the cutting out. I don't get fast enough when I think I am, but I was just talking about Needs by Tanache. Yeah. Powerful R&B song, like just this confidence in her, in her, you know, sexuality, and I, oh my gosh, it's it's a banger. It's certainly a banger. Number twenty-three. So, uh, yeah, brilliant song. Poster Boy by Two Honest. Wow, it's it's a very chaotic uh, track for sure. Like this noise is, um, it's almost like, like he's feeling this distortion on his voice. The synths are just insanely loud. Uh, it, it's very much so uh, like a punch to the gut for sure. A lot of fun. Next up here, Code I Would Buy by Joey. Uh, yeah, one of the catchier songs this year. It's crazy to think that it's like one and a half minutes long or something like that, but it really, really, really sells. Uh, you know, just from coming to Just Tired uh, 2 and to this, this song is much more of this R&B, like, melody, uh, very soft, clean voice from Joey. Uh, and, you know, lyrically, it's pretty straightforward and cute, I would say. He's, he, he's shining with his personality on that song. Next up, FaceTime by Billy Woods, Kenny Siegel. Um, yeah, this song I think is just the most accessible song on this album. Um, like having that good boom bap beat, it's, you know, that jazzy sound to it, it's quite nice. Um, but like any of the songs on here, not just this one, he's a very good lyrical storyteller. Uh, or, or, you know, the way he's presenting images to my head. Um, but as well, the sound of this song, this is very much that, that type of rap song where you're sitting, you're sitting way laid back and you're just, you're just taking it in. Uh, yeah. Kills it. Next up, Bug Like an Angel by Mitski. Ooh, Mitski can really strip it back, you know? Um, I, I, I guess this song is just up here because of how emotive it is for me. That's why I'd put it up at number 20. It's no, it's quite this, like, slow, um, somber song. Um, yeah, wow. And even that, like, that, she has, like, one moment, too, where she kind of strikes it emotionally. And she's like, bring me by back and then like you even hear like the instrumentation kind of get louder around it um yeah <laughs> she's killing it next up be wished by lavi uh we can definitely shut out my one homie my one friend for just continuously telling me to listen to lavi because here i am now putting it at number 19 here uh the song be witched is this like just this this song like, kind of reminds me of La La Land, or like a song from La La Land, um, but maybe, you know, a little bit more uh, depth lyrically. But this is just like this cute, cute, cute love song. Um, this is a song you'd play, like, you'd hear at someone's wedding, I think. And I, I hope to one day, um, or maybe it has already happened. I don't know. It's a pretty new song still. But anyways, next up, Comatose by Quanic. Uh, yeah, Quanic is killing the game with this, like, you know, this like very noise rock shoegaze like emo music taking you back late 90s early 2000s i think comatose is just the song where i think uh the energy is the, is the best from him to be honest i mean it starts off really really loud breaks into that little soft moment you know like very much so like a 90s alt rock song and um yeah i think he really sells on vocals here as well so quantic big ups next up ditto by new jeans This and that EP, too, are pretty quite impressive, but Ditto is definitely the song that stands out the most. Um, yeah. What are we doing here with this K-pop sound? Dude, we're... At, New Jeans is absolutely killing the game. 
Um, and this song came out in like January, I think, right? So we're in January this year, and it's still it's still strong to me. Next up, I've Been Young by George Clanton. Yeah, George Clanton, great. Didn't really know him that well. Uh, and I got to see him live, too, before I even listened to this new album. And now I have like certainly gained a respect for this, this guy and, you know, seeing it be this up. Um, yeah, I've Been Young, George Clanton, this great chill wave uh, track. And... Uh, Again, another very very spacey, very psychedelic uh, type of song, um, and this it's just got this great '90s nostalgia. I would say early '90s is sort of what I'm feeling with this. It just it, it takes me to a certain place, uh, and I respect the hell out of it. Next up here, it's "Up to You Now" by Leroy off the new Daria Core. I would just say it's hard to pick a song from this because all of the songs have. Uh, the type of non-stop energy that I would sort of want, but this one was definitely my favorite. There's like this really, really crazy uh, uh, change up, um, you know, like sort of like halfway in. Um, yeah, just like the most satisfying one sound-wise. So that's the reason why that one's up here. But, you know, in my top 50, if I was, you know, not doing a one song per artist, then, you know, it would be here somewhere. And I am kind of not doing one song per, per artist because, you know, Jane Remover did have three projects this year. Anyways, under different names. Next up here, Polaris by Paranol. This this new project by Paranol is a little different, right? Because I would say it's not as aggressive sounding as uh, the, the one released prior. Um, but it's just... Uh, perfection of this like bliss when it comes to shoegaze sure you will still hear hear this heaviness uh from this song or from many other songs on this album um but i feel like the the, the noise comes in um not feeling so aggressive or you know what i mean or not feeling so overwhelming i really like float in that like it's just this brush of air hitting me uh yeah polaris boom oh my god crazy Really good. Vulture City by Venturing. Okay, so this is Jane Remover's side project, and it really blew me away this year. And Vulture City was definitely my favorite song on there. Um, it's it's more like a stripped back version of the songs maybe they were doing on Census Designated, uh, with more um, the depth of the lyrics are a little bit less. I, I think a lot of these songs are trying to place you in like specific youthful moments, and I think Vulture City does certainly does a great. Uh, great job at that. Next up here, did you know that there's a tunnel under Ocean Boulevard by Lana Del Rey? Um, yeah, yeah. I, I'm trying to think of even what I can even say about this. I, I know it's kind of weird that and, uh, it's not A&W, but I, I certainly like this one more. I like this, the just sticking with the piano ballad, working on the vocals, you know, having the like certain orchestration at, uh, at certain moments. I, I just prefer that, um, especially, you know, that one part too, bringing in, when's it gonna be my time? Oh, forgive me. It's, uh, yeah, um... Yeah, it, it, it's at least a song that's up here as well, for sure, because I think putting it on, I can feel a certain level of peace uh, in my life in that moment, for sure. Next up here, Uncanny Long Arms by Underscores and Jane Remover. Wow, Jane Remover's coming back, eh? Yeah, I was unsure on which one to pick, though, from Underscores. Like, it was either going to be, the, um, it was either going to be, um, you don't even know who I am. That one was pretty close uh, to getting this, but Uncanny Long Arms, I had to do it to that one. Um... I think working on that emo sound for sure, but then also having that loud breakdown um, and also the pairing of Underscores and Jane Remover. I think they really sell on that. Um, yeah, wonderful song. Next up here, Garbage Pail Kids, JPEG Mafia, and Danny Brown. Ooh, um, again, this is another project where many songs could have made it on this list, but uh, I feel like this is the one where that, that I already said this in my other my top 10 of um, back in June, but yeah, that guitar, that droning guitar when that clicks in, man, um, just a, like, just working on a rap album where everything, the noise is just so harsh, it just makes you feel so uncomfortable, I think, like, that sound, I really wonder if anyone's going to try to replicate that sound, because at least how I'm seeing it now, like, they pick Mafia, Danny Brown, they got it in the bag. Next up here, Poster Girl by Hannah Diamond! Come on, yo. A hyper-pop song making it high up on my list. You should not be surprised. Um, yeah. This song is just... It, it, it's... Yeah, of course. Catchy. Like, obviously, I'm going to give that its value. It's certainly catchy. But I, I think the emotions of... Um, just, the, like, the freedom that I feel when this song is on. 
Um, although the lyrically it is still kind of sad, right? Because it's much more about someone having like self-esteem issues. But I, I also think that's kind of cool to have that type of, um, you know, contrast. Uh, next song on here, So You Were Tired by Sophie and Stevens. I'm going to be honest too, like this album um, was definitely a grower. Uh, it didn't um, click as well initially, but now it's like... But So You Were Tired, I think, is... It's a hard one, because I understand Will Anybody Ever Love Me is, like, really close to that spot as well. But uh, I think this one just... I get to sit in the emotions for this one uh, much better. And obviously, the content uh, in regards to, like, um, his uh, partner who has passed... I don't know, man, no no one replicates the emotions of Sophie and Stevens, I swear to God. Like, I try to think about other artists who can have, like, multiple, multiple, multiple songs in their catalog where I'm like, God damn, I'm tearing up, bro. Like, I don't even know anything about this guy's life in reality, but I fucking feel it, you know? I feel it. So, Sophie and Stevens, keep doing what you're doing, man. It's obviously working. Next up, Now by Yeet. Um, yeah, Now by Yeet is one of Yeet's best songs in my, in my eyes. It really is. This song stands out for me because it's not trying to be this hardcore rap song um, as often, or hardcore rage song as it often is. I think um, it, it's a very, very depressing, uh, melodious song uh, by the man, right? Like, it just seems like someone who is struggling with, uh, with reality, but is still, like, kind of trapped um, and what's expected of them. Yeah. Yeah, I love the sound of that song. Like, it, just having a, a song by Yeet that is this, like, just sad feeling. Um, um, yeah. Wow. Next up here, Daisies by Yule. Again, another hard one to choose because I also really, really, really like Ghosts. And Ghosts probably would have been in that, would have been in at least my top 15. Um, right? So... Uh, yeah, Daisies is, um, we're working on this, like, soft grunge vocals from her as well, but then, uh, um, just this, like, uh, it's just, like, this amazing punchy grunge song, for, for, for sure. To have a grunge song of this sound in 2023, um, wow, absolutely blowing away. Um, and then obviously there is certainly the lyrical content, um, of this song in relation to what this whole album is about. Although I will argue that I think Ghosts I may like more lyrically, um, I do think that the sound of this song uh, sells the most. Um, the guitar. Oh my god. Uh, next up, So Right by Carly Rae Jepsen. The beat on that? Oh my gosh. Carly Rae Jepsen, uh, as much uh, as most of us music nerds know, is the master of her craft, and she does not get um, her f flowers as much in the mainstream pop scene as she should. But yeah, so right by Carly Rae Jepsen. Like every time that beat hits, man, I'm like, greatly sounds like something from the late '60s. Right? Like this sort of sunshine pop sound, you know? Like this feels straight out of the 60s and it doesn't seem to like be different in quality though. That's the thing, right? Like I think there's going to be many artists who, you know, try to rip from the nostalgia of other uh, decades and they won't make something that is as good as the best. But I think uh, Lemon Twig certainly has succeeded in that. In depressing vocals, um, with such a hardcore sound, and I think this really sells for sure, especially that end part, right, where he's talking about being on some, like, game show or something like that. Like, what the absolute fuck? Like, I'll be listening to this, like, a few times listening to this in the car, right? I'm driving somewhere, and my eyes are just wide open. I'm just like... <laughs> like, what? Yeah. Absolutely brilliant. Next song on here, number two, Pretty Impossible by Caroline Polachek. That was my number one back in June. It stood pretty song, or stood pretty strong. Um, I don't know what it is with Caroline Polachek. Like, why do I like this this woman's music so much? I really don't get it. I mean, the production is on point. This 2000s, like, down tempo is just such a, a vibe. Um, and when I say vocals on point, though, like, I really mean, like, I, there's such a, a, such a pull to how she sings on all of her songs like it just like in the sense where i'm singing along right i don't think there's another artist on this top 50 none none at all that i can think wow um like in comparison to how how vocals like shake me to my core 
Okay, um, so Caroline Polachek, right? This number two, you did it. You dig dang did it. And number one song should be no surprise to you. It's a Jam Remover song, uh, off of the new album Senses Designated. The song that spoke to me the most was Idling Somewhere. Um, yeah, wow. Uh, with a lot of these songs, I mean, these six minute songs have. And again, first time listening to this album, it's like you like it, but you don't really know what to think about it as much. Um, but coming back to it, it blows my mind and this is one of those songs, these six minute songs that take you on such a journey to all these different changes in sound for sure. I mean, because you have like certainly this rockier element, you're stuck in that like really loud rock shoegaze moment, then it's going to get louder. Um, until it gets really quiet and th I mean this song being number one too especially for that like two minute um, I woke up no no that's not what it is <laughs> I had a dream how my teeth fell out sleeping next to you and I cry God I'm so tired of being young like just that whole, all that whole moment like that to me is very familiar to how I was feeling with movies for guys because movies for guys does that as well right where it's you know except it's in this electronic state but later on to the song it goes to that slow quiet moment and I think those two pairings of what Jane Remover is doing there continuously is working so Jane Remover keep doing what you're doing I'm loving it completely anyways those are the top 50 songs of 2023 okay let me know what you think uh, in the comments below or what your some of your favorite songs are because I you know um, a lot of you are frequent viewers and I would uh, just be curious to see um, what your faves are or if there's something that I haven't even listened to that you guys liked uh, yeah if there's anything else you want to see me react to anything at all put a comment down below and uh, thank you for watching peace